Hello, everybody. We are back again for another live. I am sticking to this uh, weekly live schedule, uh, doing my best at least. You know, as I said, that was something that I had promised myself I would do beginning of 2022. Um, hope everybody is doing great today. Um, per usual, I'm just going to kind of wait and see who comes on um, as you come in to the uh, live um into the the chat box please let me know where you're from uh tell me your name um all that good stuff if you guys don't know who i am my name is danny and i'm one of the head coaches uh here with uh with my ex again and happily committed um but again like i said just gonna gonna sit back a little bit and, and see who gets to join us today i hope everybody's having an amazing day so far but uh let's let's fire up the chat box i want to see who's here i want to see who's going to participate today hello eileen good to see you again da, 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 da. can you hear me eileen actually can you let me know if you can hear me again this is always like my paranoia that nobody can hear me but usually everybody can what's up darren how's it going Da, 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 da. Perfect. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Eileen, for letting me know. Okay, we got a few people coming in or trickling in. Went from 8 to 14 to 21. So let's just give it one more minute. Like I said, guys, let me know where you're from. Put it in the chat box. Tell me your name. If this is your first time at being on a live, if you've been here before, all that fun stuff. Jim, thank you so much for letting me know. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, obviously, you guys can also see that I'm not in my normal environment or my office where I usually shoot my lives. Um, I'm actually traveling right now. I'm visiting family in Atlanta, Georgia. So if there's anybody actually who is from Georgia, put it in the box. Let's see. Dorothy, thank you for letting me know I am clear. Hello, Omar from Egypt. Uh, Sonam from England. First time on the live. Amazing. Welcome to the live. Diamond from Colorado, I believe. I think that abbreviation is correct. From Zambia. Amazing. Perfect. Miami, Florida, my man. Awesome. This is not your first time. Well, welcome back to the live. I will actually be in Miami, I want to say in April. So I usually kind of bounce back between Los Angeles, Atlanta, and Miami. Thank you for confirming that that was an abbreviation for Colorado. I appreciate it. Ah, Fami, hello, welcome. All right, guys, so let's not waste any more time. Uh, let's just kind of jump right into it, right? So the, the topic of the live, obviously, is uh, roadblocks to moving on. So my assumption would be if you are here, it is because it is something that you have gone through, you are currently going through. Um, and if that is the case, you know, I, I empathize with you, I know how difficult that can be. Um, you know, it's never really an easy road when it comes to a breakup and making the decision whether you should move on or whether you should stay in the relationship. But if you have made the choice to move on, my assumption would be there is reason for that. However, most of the time, people struggle with moving on. And the reason for why a majority of people struggle with moving on is two primary reasons. I mean, there's there's a multitude of different reasons why, right? There's different variables, there's different factors, there's the severity of the breakup, how long you've known each other, there's so many different factors. But based on my the work that I've done with many clients, right? And what I've come to find throughout this process is that there's two primary reasons. So the first primary reason for why it's difficult for people to move on from a breakup is because we sit and hyper-focus on the potential of what could have been. So we sometimes have difficulty separating the person themselves and the potential of the relationship. So the only thing that we have that is tangibly in front of us is the individual. We can't tangibly hold on to potential, right? It's just something that we we think about, that we theorize, that we we hope for. So it's not something that you can really hold on to. So what we actually end up doing is that we transfer that that hope for for that future and what you had imagined and what you had 
believed was going to happen and you transferred onto the individual. Now, yes, that individual is the person that you had hoped you were going to spend the rest of your life with or however many years with, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, since that relationship is now over and that person is no longer in the picture, the only thing you can really tangibly put that potential into is the individual. So what ends up happening? We start fighting with that person. We you know, get frustrated, we get angry, we get resentful, we lash out, we act irrational. And all of those things actually contribute to pushing that person further and further and further away. And it's most of the time, it's not exactly what we're wanting to do. We're wanting some sense of closure. We're wanting some some sense of relief, right? Because the pain can be insurmountable. It's something that's difficult to, to deal with. And because that person is no longer going to be a part of our future, and we had invested so much time and energy into that person, right, so that that potential was possible, there's almost this underlying expectation that that person now has to relieve our pain. That person has to make us feel better. And the truth of the matter is, is that that's not their responsibility anymore. They made a decision. And even though that decision does not align with what you would have done or what you would have wanted, we have to also respect the fact that they are an autonomous, independent human being. And the decision that they made is theirs. And I get that. It sucks. And again, it depends on the circumstance, right? What were the reasons for the breakup? What was the severity of the breakup? Was it because of infidelity, lack of communication? Was the, you know, was there a lack of intimacy? Did you start to drift apart? Was there a disconnect? There's so many different factors that contribute to a breakup. But at the end of the day, what really keeps us stuck, what really keeps us in the mud is missing that potential. So the first thing that I tell clients, the first thing that I tell people, and the first thing that I'm telling you guys is that you have to really take a set, step back and reflect and think to yourself, is it that I am truly missing this person at this point? Or is it because I am missing the potential of what could have been? And if you are missing the potential of what could have been, the reality is that potential is still there. The ability to have that future is still there. It's just not with the individual that you had imagined it was going to be with. And again, I'm not taking away from the fact that that's not difficult to process. That's going to take a grieving. That's going to take grieving. That's going to take you sitting down and understanding, hey, look, you know, this, this is not going to happen anymore. So you have to get step out of denial and you have to start the process of grieving. And if you guys are not familiar with the process of grieving, it's actually something, the best thing that I can recommend is looking up Kubler-Ross um, just type it into Google and understand what the steps of grieving are for many people. And this is usually the confusing part is it's both, right? It's not just one or the other, but understanding that at this point and the reality of your situation is you are probably missing that person because they were a part of your life for such a long period of time, or even a short period of time, and they became a part of your daily routine. They became a part of, of something that you were used to having around all the time. And human beings in general, we are creatures of habit. It brings us comfort, it brings us security, it brings us a sense of foundation. So now that the person is long, no longer in our life, we feel like everything is crumbled. Like we are no longer secure, we are no longer safe, we don't have that sense of, of stability that we once did. But the truth of the matter is, is that actually leads me to my next point. And the reason for why a lot of people struggle with moving on is insecurities, right? When a relationship reaches a breaking point, it is usually because there are a few factors, right? There are, uh, there may be self-esteem issues that are involved here. There's insecurity issues. There is a loss of self-identity, many different reasons why, right? Um, and I always explore this with my clients and we try to figure out, okay, specifically, what is the root? Why did things change? Why did the, why did the dynamic change? But regardless of that fact, those insecurities can contribute to the breakdown of a relationship. And if you are basically in a place now where you have a bunch of insecurities and you haven't dealt with them and you haven't processed them and you haven't really unpacked them, 
now you're in a position where you're having to solely rely on yourself. You're having to rely on your own confidence and your ability to see past the pain and the hurt and the anguish and visualize a positive future for yourself. So during this period of time, instead of focusing on why the relationship ended, it's really about focusing on yourself. What is, what, what is it that you are missing in your life? What is lacking? What were you not getting in the relationship? What, what was not fulfilling you? Were your needs and your expectations being met? Were your partner's needs and expectations being met? Were you showing up for the relationship the way that you should have showed up, right? These are all things that you should be thinking about. But again, I don't want you hyper-focusing on the relationship ended. I don't know why. I need closure. Tell me why the relationship ended. Because nine times out of 10, we don't get the closure that we want. If we go to an ex and we ask them why they broke up with us, we may not even get the answer that we want. And that can actually set us back even more because we're going to feel gross about the answer. So two major reasons for why people have problems moving on is A, you know, the, the potential, what the potential of the relationship could have been and the insecurities that prevent us from getting out of this, this rut that we are in. You know, and again, like I said, it's, there's so many variables here there. The potential can is there. What I'm trying to say basically is that there's so many different reasons for why and so many different elements that are involved in a breakup and having trouble moving on that it's difficult to pinpoint one or the other. And that is why I always recommend one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions because everybody's situation is different. Everybody has a specific circumstance. And right now on these lives, it's difficult for me to be specific with it, right? Because the possibilities are endless. And actually, I just caught what you said, Abner, endless. You're completely right. So, you know, it could be the fact that you are in your mid to late 40s and you thought this relationship was it and now it's not it anymore. And you have to consider putting yourself back out of the market and your internal clock is ticking and you're wanting, you know, to actually settle down and, and have the, the marriage and the kids and all of those things, right? So age can also be a factor in this as well. Um, it can also have to do with insecurities from childhood, right? How you cope and how you manage. What is your attachment style? Have you noticed that you have a tendency of being codependent within a relationship? There's so many different factors that play into this, but at the end of the day, the two major ones that I see quite frequently is the hoping for the potential and the insecurities that stop us from being able to move on from the situation. And guys, pretty much those are the two major ones, right? Um, again, I can go on forever and ever and ever about all the specific possibilities, um, but this would be the never ending live. So <laughs> we're not going to do that. Um, I just wanted to focus on the two major ones. Um, what I will do for you guys, if you if you are here and you're feeling like your situation is so specific and you just you need the answers and you need to know how to move on from the situation, I am more than happy to support you through that. I'm more than happy to have a one on one coaching session with you. Um, if you feel like you need that, I'm actually going to put the website in here for you. So you can take a look at that. Give me one second, guys. I'm actually going to grab the link. So since we are live, obviously these things take time. And actually what I should probably start doing is prepping these links for you guys so you guys don't have to experience me doing this. <laughs> okay, so what I'm putting here, guys, is a link to the coaching page. So if you feel like you need a coaching session, I am more than happy to do that for you. Um, uh, Abner, you booked yesterday waiting for a date set up. Okay, perfect. Um, do you know who you booked with? Just by, just out of curiosity. And basically, so you guys know what the process is as well. When you book through the website for a coaching session, usually what ends up happening is whichever coach you booked with, that coach will receive a confirmation. Sometimes there is a delay in the coach receiving the confirmation, but it's because, you know, we do get a lot of emails from clients. 
Um, once the coach receives a confirmation, they will actually reach out to you directly and set up a session. So what I usually tell people is from the time that you book until the time that you get to set up your session is usually anywhere between 24 to 48 hours, but we do our best to keep it within the 24 hour window. Um, Abner, you booked with Natalie. Perfect. Natalie is really on top of it. Um, I mean, all of the coaches are, but Natalie is really on top of her game. So I would not be surprised if you don't, if, if you, you'll probably hear from her by the end of day today. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Um, again, guys, so I put, I put the link there. Um, and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put my email here. Uh, okay, so you guys have my email. So if you guys want to reach out to me directly, if you have any specific questions, um, if you are confused about how to, you know, set up a coaching session, I am more than happy to walk you through that. Um, I also offer different packages that are not available on the website. So if this is something that you kind of feel like you need help with um, for the next couple of weeks, the new, next few weeks, I do that for people. Obviously, I'm also very financially and budget conscious because I know that these are tough times. I know that we're still kind of coming out of the end of a pandemic. So there are many different things that I offer. Um, let's see, Abner, tell us about your email package. So email packages, um, it depends most of the time for myself, I don't usually do email packages, but it's really, again, dependent on what my client needs. So if you are international and you are more comfortable writing an email, than you are talking on the phone, then obviously I make it work. Um, but again, those are all things that I can discuss with you, uh, via email because my email is in the chat box. I'll put it one more time as well at the coach. Okay. So usually, guys, what I what I do is at the end of these uh, lives, I will usually have like a question and answer portion, but I'm changing the structure a little bit moving forward, just so you guys know. So basically, what I'm going to start doing is that for these specific lives, when it comes to specific topics that I'm going to be talking about, I will solely stick to the topics and, and give you guys the information and, and my recommendations and all of those types of things. What I am now doing is that twice a month, so obviously, there's four weeks in a month, usually. Um, and two out of two weeks out of those four will be like this, where I talk about a specific topic, a subject or whatever the case may be. The other two will be just straight question and answer lives. So it'll be just like this, I will log on. And from the get go, it'll just be any questions that you guys have for me, I will answer them live. Those will usually run about 20 or 30 minutes. But I figure it gives me more time to answer more questions as opposed to trying to squeeze it in at the end of every live. So if that is something you are interested in, if that is something that you want to attend, I would highly recommend subscribing to our YouTube, to our websites, um, so that you actually get the newsletter and so that you know when the next lives are and so that you know when the next question and answer live is. So if you have any specific questions, I will do my best to answer them at that point. So that being said, it was amazing seeing you guys again. Hopefully I will see all of you guys on the next live. For those of you who joined for the first time, I hope you got something out of this live. I look forward to seeing you guys on the question in at the question and answer live. I think that'll actually be something that you guys enjoy um, and you feel like you're going to get a little bit more out of it. And again, yeah, if you guys feel like you need a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, guys, I promise you one of the biggest things when it comes to one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions is the fear of what to expect. My biggest thing when it comes to coaching is helping you get gain a different perspective, helping you understand the importance of communication and basically changing your vantage point a little bit. And I know that that's something that a lot of people have trouble with, but it is my specialty. So if you want to gain a different perspective, if you want to try to understand where your ex or where your partner is coming from, I'm the guy for you. So pleasure seeing you guys again. I hope to see you guys again on the next live and we'll see you guys later.